Uh, hi, I'm Matt Brinning. I'm here today at Cool Tools, here to show you how to make a simple bezel stack ring. So today we're going to be using a Smith Mini Torch, a pair of snips, a pair of chain nose pliers, a pair of half round pliers, a protective mask, a ring clamp, a ring mandrel, a rawhide hammer, a chasing hammer, a electric torch striker, a saw frame, a pair of snips, a set of hot picks, soldering picks, and a bezel punch. In addition, you're going to need a soldering pan, a pair of crosslock tweezers, some 14 gauge silver wire, a silver solder, hard, medium, and easy, which I've marked with a Sharpie so I know which solder I'm using, and some 4.78 millimeter sterling seamless tubing, and of course a four millimeter stone, and some setting burrs. So to start out to make our ring, what we're going to do is take our 14 gauge, 14 gauge wire and we're going to uh, use the side of the mandrel as a gauge to figure out how long we need to make our piece. So on the side of the, the mandrel, here is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to size 15. That's a gauge that you can use to measure out the piece of wire that you're going to need to cut to make an appropriate size ring. So I'm going to make this about a size seven. Lining up the wire with the gauge, I'm going to take my flush cutters and cut right at the size seven. And this is going to be approximate. I may need to adjust the size further down the line with the project. Now silver wire is pretty easy to manipulate, very malleable, and I'm just going to use my mandrel and my fingers and thumbs to, to push it around to size. I'll take the rawhide mandrel, excuse me, rawhide mallet, kind of get it a little bit rounder there. Now we don't have a good seam there. You can see it's a little bit crooked. So this is probably going to reduce the ring in size a little bit as I flatten this out to get a good seam. I'm using a quick release Fordham hand piece and a sanding disc. I'm just going to sand this even. Getting a little closer. Another little trick you can do to make sure that you get a good seam to make your solder joint is you can take a saw and cut right through it. Keep in mind while you're doing this and you're taking away material, you are reducing the circumference of the ring. And also what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking the metal, making a ring shape, and I'm, I'm pushing the two pieces past one another to increase the tension right there where I'm going to make a solder joint. So now we're going to solder our seam on our sterling silver wire ring. I'm going to dip this in a mixture of boric acid and alcohol, and that's denatured alcohol. I'm going to use the hard solder, which I've marked with an H here. Use our snips and cut off a little piece. Using a fairly big fluffy flame here. What I like to do is to dip the pick 
into the bore cast and alcohol, run a little bit more right at the solder seam. I'm going to use a green flux, but just a dab right at the solder seam. And that's so that the solder can adhere and flow through right where we want it to. And we'll take that peach and quench it in pickle. After all the filing and everything to make my seam, we, we can see that we've made it a little bit smaller um, than the original intended size of a size seven, but we're gonna adjust the size later. Um, but I'm gonna hammer it out and see how, how close we get. Looks like we're about a five and a half, size five and a half. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the steel block here and just to make it flat, I'm gonna use a chasing hammer and flatten it out this way. And again on the other side. You got a ring started. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna charge one side of this stacker ring with medium solder and that's where I'm gonna be attaching my tubing for the bezel. I'm gonna cut a second piece just so I have a backup in case I happen to drop one. Again, charging, charging that up a little bit with some green flux so that our medium solder will go right where we want it to. I don't know if you noticed, but the solder kind of jumped right along that flux line. I'm going to go ahead and quench this in pickle. Putting boric acid and alcohol on the ring once again, making sure that we're clamping at the, the seam side and that the medium charge side of the ring is facing outward. I've already covered the ring with boric acid and alcohol, and I'm going to put some right on the end of the tubing. You want to make sure that all that's burned off before you try to solder it to the ring. Now, my hands are calloused and used to the heat that is created. The, the heat will transfer pretty quickly down the tubing. So if, you're, if your hands are not used to that type of heat, you may want to use a leather glove. Piece is soldered and we're going to quench that in. Remember not to grab too far down because that is still pretty warm. All right, we have our tubing soldered in place on the end of our stacker ring and I'm going to cut it off to length. Um, for the appropriate depth for the, the stone, you may want to adjust with a file after, after cutting the tubing off. <laughs> Taking a large file, we're just evening our saw cut. So I'm gonna use the flex shaft to clean this up a little bit. I'm just gonna use a pumice wheel and I'm gonna clean up right around my solder seam, right around the bezel. I'm 
this very lightly so that we're not creating any gouges into the metal. Then I'm going to use a satin wheel to brighten up some of this fire scale that's on here. And at this point, I'll take the ring and put it into the tumbler and get a nice shine on it. So now we're getting ready to set our stone. I'm going to take my burnished ring and put it in the ring clamp here. And I've selected three burrs here, uh, the approximate size of the stone. And the way that I, that I establish what size burr I'm going to need, I take the stone, put a pair of digital calipers on it, and then get a setting burr that's slightly smaller to start with to cut, cut, make the first cut on the bezel, and then gradually getting bigger. Often you'll feel the teeth just catch slightly on the edge of the caliper. That's right about the size that you're going to want for the final seat for the stone. Now we're going to start with our smallest setting burr. Use a little wax as a lubricant to cut our seat. And we're going with a slightly larger burr next. final burr which is the last. You don't necessarily have to use three burrs. You may be able to get to the, the final stage just using one burr. And I'm rotating the ring kind of looking at the bezel wall the very edge to make sure that that is uh, pretty even all the way around. The girdle of the stone is going to be seated just below the top edge of the tubing. So we've got our stone seated well. The, the bezel wall seat is uh, pretty even all the way around. And the way that I can kind of adjust that is I take the piece of beeswax, put the stone in there, and then kind of push it around until the table, the very top facet of the stone, is fairly flat and even with the top of the tubing bezel. Remove that and then we put it on the ring mandrel. I put it right into the to the mandrel hole here on the bench. Now to protect the stone, if you're a little bit nervous, you don't necessarily have to do this, but this is a, is a pretty good little trick. You can take some of this wax is, that is just used to uh, lubricate the bed, the uh, setting burr. And you can put a little bit of, bit of that around the outside edge of the stone. I've selected uh, a bezel punch that is slightly larger than the than the outside diameter of the tubing. And here's the fun part, I get to hit it with the hammer. So what that does is it brings all the tubing in at once. And now I'm going to use a slightly smaller bezel punch. For the final push of the material over the edge of the stone. And so what this is doing is it's, it's uh, creating a seal around the whole circumference of the stone, making it tight. It's a good fit. I'm going to go ahead and take the handle. So using it with the handle, I'm going to tap it again, but the, the wood handle is going to act like a bit of a shock absorber, and we're just going to tap it light, much lighter this time. 
and then we're also going to use the bezel punch. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm rounding, burnishing at the same time that last bit of metal right over the edge. This stone is corundum, so it's a really good uh, starter stone to use to do this type of setting because it's a very hard stone. I'm going to put this back into my ring clamp. And the final thing I'm going to do is take my small burnisher and go around the outside edge. This, this should reduce any small burrs that we see. And I notice that my, my stone is moving just a little bit. So I'm going to tidy that up. So my, my bezel punch pushed down the majority of that metal over the edge of the stone. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this bezel pushing or prong pushing tool to do the very last bit of pushing towards the basically making a flat circumference around that stone. I line up the piece and I'm tap, tapping right on the back of the, of the wooden handle which there again reduces the shock that's coming down on the tool right next to the stone. Again, this created ruby or created crundum is very nice to use because, because it is a hard stone and you're less likely to, to chip or crack the stone. You just want to make sure that you're keeping the edge of the tool away from the crown facets of the stone while you're doing this last little bit. You have a fairly flat surface all the way around the circumference of that stone. I'm going to take it off of the mandrel, put it back into our ring clamp. I'm going to use a burnishing tool to go around the inside edge. That's just taking away any sharpness that you may feel between the stone and the outside edge of the bezel. And just go around with one quick motion, not being too aggressive, not pushing too hard on the, on the metal or the stone. Test with your finger. If you feel any sharp edges, you can go back in there and reduce reduce those sharp edges with the with the burnishing tool. Now for the final polish. So the very very last thing that I'm doing is taking the any edges that I may feel on the outside circumference of the bezel off with a using a round rubber wheel. and then coming in with another one that's a little bit softer grit to do that final shine. All right, so the, the final step here uh, to remove any wax or anything that may be around the stone or any imperfections or basically just to shine it up, we're just gonna use a polishing cloth and go around the outside of the bezel down the shank of the ring and there you go, you have a, a finished stack or bezel ring. Thanks for tuning in today. Hopefully these instructions were helpful for you that you can make some of your own bezel stack rings in all various colors and stack them up and mix and match as you like. Thank you.